Hey, what's up everybody? It's Lids, and we're back for some more Gwent, and today we're playing more of the Plus One Seasonal Event, which is an alternate game mode in which whenever we play a unit, we will spawn a one power copy of that unit in the same row. And that enables some pretty crazy combos, including ones with a card that was supposed to be nerfed, but is still incredibly strong. So let's go take a look at the deck. So today we'll be playing a Monsters Carapace Sir Scratch-A-Lot deck, because Scratch-A-Lot, although theoretically having gotten nerfed in the previous patch, I think we'll find is still incredibly powerful, especially in this event. So maybe they just can't get rid of him because he truly does have nine lives. The way he works is when we play him, we'll of course create a copy of him, as are the rules in this event. And whenever we replay him with his order ability, he will increase his power by two. And that is a great way to trigger a bunch of Thrive on our side of the board. Not to mention, it also means that when our opponent plays tall cards, they can trigger our Thrive as well. So because every time we replay him in this event, we will create an additional copy of Scratch-A-Lot, we quite literally can get an entire board of Scratch-A-Lots, which if it sounds ridiculous, it's because it is. So outside of Scratch-A-Lot, we will have Thrive, like Necker, like Drowner, like Bruxa, and Fuka, and Intriga Larva. Those are the key cards we're trying to trigger the Thrive on. However, what we actually want to do is we want to, in round one in particular, Play our lower base power bronze Thrive engines like Andrega Larva and notably not Fuka. Anything that is below four base power in particular. You might be able to anticipate why that is. So Bruxa, Drowner, and Necker as well. So trigger the Thrive on them as many times as you as you would like from spamming as many scratch lots as you can. But then what we're gonna do is in round two slash three, we'll use Witch's Sabbath, and because by making sure that we're only playing low base power cards, we will guarantee that we still get all of those scratch lots back on the board with Witch's Sabbath in round two or round three, so we can use this combo once again. And the issue here is that it will bring back the scratch lots with Doomed, and one of the reasons why scratch lot got uh, nerfed in the previous patch is because now when a card has Doomed and you try to replay it with scratch lots ability or teleportation, for example, that means the Doom will actually destroy the card before you can replay it. That was uh, the change. However, that is why we have Spring Equinox. So what we do is we use the Witch's Sabbath to bring those Scratch Lots back out onto the board. And then we use Spring Equinox to purify all the Scratch Lots. And then we can replay them however many times we'd like. Then outside of that, we have, I mean, a few things for consistency's sake, of course, like Triss Butterflies. Notably, she is four power, but because she is a neutral card, we actually will never get her out from Witch's Sabbath. So this is fine to play this round one if you need to get Scratch Lot in your hand, for example, or you want to try to get a few more of those weaker uh, Thrive engines on the board. Then we do have a little bit in the way of other cards to play when our board starts to get full, like Lacerate. This is also safe to play in round one. Then once you get to round two, round three, and you've already used your Witch's Sabbath, you can start to break out the other higher base power cards, like Witch Apprentice, Bloody Mistress, both of which will gain additional value when you have at least 25 points in a row. Just bear in mind that you'll create two copies of Bloody Mistress, and assuming you have Sabbath, she'll spawn in those Grinacora fruits on either side of both copies, so this takes up a ton of room. Totally worth it in terms of uh, the amount of points you can get, but you need to make sure you leave a fair bit of space for her. And uh, Snowdrop... Again, neutral means totally safe to play in round one, not to mention she has the base power anyway, but uh, this can help you a little bit to fine-tune your hand further, and two snowdrops is, of course, worth a little bit more points, so not bad in that way. The beast, more points, four base power. It is a monster's unit, so you gotta be a little bit careful of this. You don't want to play it in round one when you're trying to just have scratch lot be your only four base power card. But after that, it's fine. And, I mean, we do have... Theoretically, a cave troll, which you can use to protect Scratch a lot. You'd again like to save this for round two or round three because otherwise, cave troll is going to be guaranteed to be something you get back with Witch's Sabbath, which is not really what you're trying to do. And uh, Old Spear Tip plus Old Spear Tip asleep, and you'd like to play Old Spear Tip asleep, and that way you spawn in two copies of it, so your opponent needs to get rid of both of them. Otherwise, you're going to end up summoning out your Old Spear Tip from your deck. And finally, and perhaps most significantly for round three, we have Morn's Heart. And this is huge, because since every time we play a unit, we will spawn in another copy of that unit, we will have tons of units in our graveyard by the time round two or round three rolls around. So just play this guy in your second to last turn. Might want to use the leader ability charge to help boost it up a little bit, make it a little bit less vulnerable to removal or lock. 
And then when you use that order ability, it's going to be humongous. So that is your finisher for round two slash round three. And that's really all there is to the deck. It is low base power thrive in round one, supplemented by all the scratch lots in the world, and then use Witch's Sabbath in round two slash three, combined with the Spring Equinox so that you can replay those scratch lots. And from there on out, you're able to play whatever card you'd like. You can play higher base power thrives like the Fuka. You can play higher base power cards like the Bloody Mistress, and you can finish with Mornsheart for a huge boost on your last turn. So let's go see it in action. All right, so going up against monsters here. And they'll go first. Okay, and notably no scratch a lot here, although we do have Witch's Sabbath, so that's nice, but we need a way to get our cat friend. So let's get rid of maybe a Fuka. I mean, we get more low thrive, which is good. That's what we're looking for to go along with the Sir Scratch Lot in round one, but we still need him. So that will not do. And there is Scratch Lot, so well, we know what they're doing. It would be a mirror match, but we just did not get the hand we're looking for here, and we do not have the means to correct it either, I'm afraid. So what we could do is potentially just go Drowner, destroy Scratch a lot, and leave it at that. We want this round to be as short as possible because uh, we cannot play anything bigger than four base power. Otherwise, we're going to brick our which is Sabbath. So, hmm, yeah. It's like we like to play these guys in the same round as Sir Scratch a lot. So here's a Galaxy Brain Strat. Ready? No thanks. Did that because I wanted them to just drive past that or pass immediately after having played Scratch a lot. Because now they continue to play Scratch a lot, they'll get their additional copies, and this means that we may find ourselves, which is Sabbathing their Scratch lots, which I wanted to, you know, if that was going to happen, make it so they were at most still just going to get two. But no, there. I mean, it is the right play. But I was hoping I might be able to play some mind games with them. They didn't fall for it though. And based on how they have Peller, seems like they're looking for something pretty similar to what we're doing. And for what it's worth, they cannot use Witch's Sabbath, or they will get nothing from Witch's Sabbath if we have zero units in our graveyard. So I'm kind of hoping they try and think they're going to get their Scratch Loss, and it's just not going to work. I mean, if they destroy something this round, then it will start to work. But uh, now we just use all of our many, many mulligans to try to find... Please scratch lot or wait to get him. I mean, we have lots of cards now that we can go along with him in this round, so that is good. But there he is. Okay, those were all other cards that would have been useful in round three in particular, but we just can't play them until we've already used scratch lot. Is the thing? It's Royal decree into cave troll, and then I think that's going to be because they want to witch's Sabbath melee row protect their scratch lots. But uh, again, they're not getting anything out of that unless they destroy something from our graveyard, or destroy something on the board on our side, so they we have units in our graveyard. So, I mean, granted, whatever we play here is gonna be destructible. But go Larva, even the one power unit has armor. We go Scratch a lot. We could use Carapace on the weaker version even. That would make it somewhat difficult to destroy him, but not impossible. We might need to do that. I think we might need to do that. You have immunity, so you can't get targeted. Four power is destroyable. Seven power probably is not. The reason why I don't love that, and by don't love that, I mean I really don't like that very much, is because it does mean that when we replace Scratch Lot, we're losing these boosts. It is purely a temporary means to make it so they cannot get any units in our our graveyard, and that was totally a way for them to get Witch's Sabbath. Or Spores to reset this, and then destroy, or that, okay, I mean, sure. We have a Spring Equinox in our D 
deck right now, but we have Last Raid in hand. That would have been the best card for us to play through Arcane Tome. I think we might just be dumping this. Because what else is it just? I think it's only a Spring Equinox that we have. Oh, well, I mean, we'll take O'Nero. <laughs> I, I mean, I guess we'll take O'Nero <laughs> if you're forcing me to. Um, first, let's get... I mean, yeah, let's get as much Thrive on the board as possible first. So, it's you. Then it's Arcane Tome, O'Nero, into... Technically, it either needs to be you or Snowdrop, because anything else is too big to replay Scratch a lot. Or more entire, but we want to save that for round three. So do this. Then we replay you guys, and as I was saying, technically speaking, when we replay this scratch a lot, he's gonna lose that boost that we got from our leader ability, but we just needed him to survive a turn so that we could get him big enough to get him out of removal range and create other scratch lots. If they want to destroy those, that means if they use Witch's Sabbath, they may be getting a scratch lot back on their side, but we're getting a scratch lot back as well. So that doesn't really help them all that much. All right, they'll go Bruxa. I mean, this is all just making it even clearer that they have what is functionally just about exactly the same deck as us. And I think that was largely a throwaway. So I think we will probably do the same thing here and just put some weak thrive on the board and get some more scratch lots going. So now, even if they did get scratch lot out, which I don't think they're gonna do at this point, I think we have basically countered it for this round at least. If they did it, it would backfire big time because we have substantially more Thrive on the board than they have, which means they play the the uh, Scratch Lots, they replay them, but when they use that, they'll trigger their Thrive, they'll trigger our Thrive as well, and we'll get more points per turn than they will. So that's why I think they're not going to do that here. I think they're going to wait until round three. Yeah, exactly. That makes sense. So that means we will fend off the bleed here, if you even want to call it that. And we should still have a functional setup for going into round three. And so now we can basically do exactly what they were trying to do in the previous round. Drop a cave troll and use that to help protect. The uh, sort of scratch loss that we get out. We'd like to get rid of this other Spring Equinox. We do need one. We don't need two, though. And Morn's Heart is, yes, going to be our finisher because we have a lot of units in our graveyard. Actually, not as many as we'd like to have because we obviously uh, did not play anything in round one. But uh, what does that mean we're going to do with O'Nero then? Maybe Bloody Mistress. It is going to take up some room, but that is going to get us a lot more Thrive on the board. Uh, Fuka is really nice. We should probably see if we can get that and we got one okay perfect because this is board space is going to become an issue because as we saw in even a short round two those scratch lots take up a ton of board space so getting something that gets boosted by two with just one spot uh that it takes up is great whereas something like in Drigal larva i mean yes that's also two thrives per turn three thrives per turn in this event but uh because it takes up more space it's not ideal so I think the question here is just, do we go Thrive first, or do we do go Scratch Lot first? I think we probably do want to go Thrive first. I think we probably do want to go Thrive first, and Fuka is technically the best option, yes, but I'm concerned about if we do go Fuka turn one, could they potentially do something like uh, Drowner and destroy our one power Fuka, and we don't want them to do that, so I think we'll wait a little bit. Etivald, oh no. Oh no. So uh, this is an amazing combo. Absolutely amazing combo with Scratch a lot because uh, you can play a bunch of cards very quickly with Etibald and Scratch a lot is cursed. So it means they, they can chain these together really quickly and easily. Before we destroy one of them though, because this would be their highest base power card, we need to use Witch's Sabbath so that we're bringing back the Scratch lots rather than the Etibalds or possibly even Pellers instead. That'd be amazing if we got some Pellers out. Oh, well, it'd be Cave Trolls. Cave Trolls first. Hmm. Two Cave Trolls. This is going to be interesting. I think we have to. This is going to be really interesting, though. We should do it 
in this row where they can't block the right two balls. They do get a scratch a lot, yes. We get three, of course. But, oh, we might want a carapace on one of the scratch a lots to help protect it. That might be the way to go here. It's really tempting because these Etibalds, they are on cooldown now, but the problem is scratch a lot is going to give them the cooldown back really quickly here. Okay, and it's Beast. Not a bad option, but short term, it still means that the Thrive boosts, obviously we're getting more of them there, because we have Thrive, they have none. So as of right now, as long as we're triggering Thrive every time they play a card, then the infusions from the Eti Vault's not a huge problem. But if they continue to load up on more rounds of this, then it does become an issue. So that's why we really need to get rid of one of them. Ideally, both of them. And we can do that with Lacerate or, better yet, Drowner. Destroy one and get more Thrive on the board simultaneously. So that's, I think, the plan. So let's go that route here. Because these guys... There's a huge synergy between scratch a lot and Etibald, and we obviously can't hit these scratch lots when they're behind the Cape Troll, but last raid actually could destroy one of them. Oh, this is going to get boosted, but they're going to keep on playing more scratch lots soon. I don't do this until you use Spring Equinox, for what it's worth, which we are going to do on our next turn, because we were doing uh, Drowner on this turn. So um, don't click on these yet. Don't click on them yet. They might be able to destroy one with uh, Etibald plus scratch a lot. I think they will. It's unfortunate. It just means it's going to be a little bit slower to multiply the scratch a lot. So obviously, in case it wasn't clear, that was a misplay uh, using the uh, the scratch a lot order ability previously. Before this most recent patch, that was something you could do, but that is the thing that they changed was doomed units will get destroyed when they get removed from the board before they get reset by replaying a card. So scratch a lot, teleportation. You have to purify the doomed before you use that stuff. Hey, they're making more scratch lots. So yeah, they're going to have a lot of scratch lots. If we can out thrive them, that's not that big of an issue. We will, of course, on our next turn, now be able to use the scratch lots in full. This is what we had to do before we replayed the scratch lots. So that's unfortunately we lost one. We also got rid of the Yeti Bald uh, infusion. So that is nice for that reason as well. If they do destroy stuff and add things to our graveyard, that's not a terrible thing because that means a stronger Mortar on our last turn. But. Now we can replay you, so we will. And create more copies of you. So again, we would have had one more scratch lot that we could have played there on that turn, which would have been great. But uh, it just means that now it's going to take a little bit longer for us to multiply the scratch lots. Eventually, of course, we're going to run out of board space if we keep on spamming scratch lot, which is why I'm not too concerned about losing that scratch lot there. We just need to make sure that we have at least one, of course. Otherwise, that means that... Uh, we will no longer be able to multiply them. Now they're going after the Drowner. Okay. Want to get probably Fuka on next, because that is our most efficient Thrive engine. And we can immediately boost up the Thrive with the Scratch Lots we have on board, so it's much safer to play, whereas previously we did not play turn one, because we were concerned that uh, we might have that card get destroyed and set up there, which is Sabbath. So here's the thing. They're dealing damage, yes, they're also boosting us with Thrive whenever they play a scratch a lot. So that's why, yes, Etibald plus scratch a lot, absolutely amazing. But this card is going to stay on five power unless and until they can double down on uh, multiple rounds of Etibald on this guy. So we could find a way to destroy Etibald. That'd be amazing. But I don't think we can really make that happen here. So at this point, let's prioritize Fuka. And we are going to need space in the melee row for more and so bear that in mind. And also, uh, getting Cave Troll down to, uh, I mean, that will immediately become the Etibald target, but could slow them down a little bit. So we're definitely out thriving them. One thing I'm actually concerned about is potential Yurden place, which is possible. But also, of course, use Carapace to uh, give Veil to one of these guys. Scratch a lot because it keeps on getting replayed. It's not really going to be a factor. But uh, on cards that are going to stay on the board and not get replayed, that could be significant. Mortart probably be the best recipient of it. Or Cave Troll if we want to try to hide things behind that. But 
We are running out of room already, because remember, it takes up two spots whenever we play a unit, so I think this Intriga Larva is probably out of the question unless they destroy some Scratch Lots, which we actually kind of want them to do at this point, because we're running out of room. We can replay Scratch a lot in this range row and just not spawn in additional copies, which is probably the way to go here. But now, I mean, our, our Thrive cards are big enough that they, for the most part, are not triggering the Thrive when they replay Scratch a lot. And they might deliberately be replaying their one power Scratch lots because, and the ones that only have two points of boosting, because that is not triggering as many Thrives. Basically just the the drowners here in the melee row. And it's still increasing their power. That one did trigger all of our thrives. That one was not as helpful for them. Okay. So we do have a little more room for what it's worth, but I think we may look to what is Onero gonna be for? And it could be Beast, it could be Bloody Mistress, which would actually be pretty amazing. We don't have a lot of room for it. If we were to move this Scratch a lot over to this row, then maybe that could be just enough space for her. It is going to mean that the Bloody Mistress switching into Gurnacore without any Gurnacore's fruits is not very useful for us. So that's, uh, for that reason, it's not great, but... And I imagine they will immediately go after those Gurnacore Fruits, but let's do this. Get you out. Make sure we have plenty of room for you to spawn in that stuff. Then we'll replay all the Scratch Loss here, and we will not pay additional copies when we do this. So it's a little bit risky if they do continue to try to damage the Scratch Loss. But, of course, we have some big Scratch Loss here, so should be at least some that remain safe here. There's the Bloody Mistress. Not quite enough room to spawn in all the Gurnacore fruits, unfortunately. But as I said, I imagine they're probably going to go after those now. Okay, and they have to do this to create some board space. Otherwise, they would have had no room to play any units at all. And that means they are now out of leader ability charges. So if they want to play any units... They just can't at this point. And they might have blown through their turn timer last turn. Because uh, that was a very quick turn. They do have the beasts, which are still getting boosted even when they're out of space. So that is one nice thing about them, which is why I was considering uh, going for the beast rather than going for the Bloody Mistress or Gurnacora. But uh, they, they did uh, keep Gurnacora's fruits on the board here. So these will start to get boosted. And that's, of course, more Thrive. So, the other problem is we need space for Morn's Heart. So, this could be time for a Lacerate. We don't really want to destroy cards because we want them to stay clogged. So, I think we will Lacerate this row here. And then we will replay our scratch lots. And it doesn't matter which scratch lot you replay. And if you're wondering, like, oh, well, Lids, you should replay your one that has the biggest boost so that you get uh, another copy that has, you know, the. The 12 point boost on it. No, the, the unit that you spawn in afterward, it, uh, that is always going to be a, uh, a base power scratch lot or an, a starting scratch lot. It's always going to be increased power by two. So, yeah, you may have beasts that get boosted by two every turn, even if you don't have any board space. We have Gurner Cores that are going to get boosted by three. So, those are a little, basically just slightly better beasts. They take up more room, is the downside. I'm actually curious. I've never tried this before. I wonder if you can... Can you scratch a lot when you replay it and go into your graveyard? And is that a way to theoretically make some space? Because we actually like that they're giving us more room here. We'd love if we had room in our melee row again. We want room for the Morn's Heart. Ideally, it is row locked to the melee row, and I'm not sure we're going to be able to make that happen. Unless they do destroy something here, but... Scratch lots at this point... I mean, we, we've loaded up on even more Thrive, so in theory, it's backfiring on them when they spam those. But let's... question is, do we even play anything in this turn, or do we immediately discard something like a Cave Troll? This Cave Troll, we could play it here. We won't spawn in a copy, but it does protect. I mean, it's not super high priority to protect these guys at this point. It's Yurden is the biggest threat, and that doesn't matter if we have a Cave Troll there. 
and Dragon Larva, just one of them, not a big deal. Um, it's basically Cave Troll, or just discard and instead have that space taken up by a, uh, a Scratch Lot. I think we might prefer a Scratch Lot, to be honest. I think we might still prefer Scratch a lot. Because, yes, they will probably destroy this one, but we kind of like when they keep on uh, destroying one card per turn. Because it does mean that we have room to do some things in the future. And then just discard you. Or really, discard the Intrigue Larva might have been an even better option, but. Big things for just a next turn, technically, would be when we need to play Morn's Heart. So the question is, do they have Yurden? But even if they do, they can't play it unless they can do that thing where they play a Scratch Lot into their graveyard to discard it. Because otherwise, they are stuck in this endless loop. A loop that, on net, doesn't really benefit them much. They get slightly more boosts, but the damage is getting negated by Drowner getting boosted. They're trying to take out a Gurnacore. Actually, we'd love for them to do that. I don't think they... Ah, uh, they might, because that would give us enough room for Mortart. That'd be perfect. I mean, they will probably go after it. But we can use our last leader ability charge on it, which might be enough to slow them down, because all their damage is coming from this Etibald, and if we have Veil in this Mortart, then they won't be able to destroy that. Oh, they have just enough that they get this last. Come on, use the last scratch a lot. Use the last scratch a lot. <laughs> we actually want you to. We actually want you to. Oh, yeah, two scratch lots left. Well, it is going to be enough to help us, so thank you. Thank you. And they even squeeze in the last scratch lot as well. Okay, so here's what we do we have room for Morn's Heart, so we play it. We have not as many units in our graveyard as we might have potentially had, but it's still pretty solid. And in all likelihood, obviously we're going to use this order of on our next turn if you survive long enough to use it. And, uh... We probably will... I mean, I guess we can play Indriga Larva if they do destroy this, and it's, I guess, better than a one-point scratch a lot. Just having that take up the last spot. So, obviously, we won't have time to use his order ability then. So, again, Geralt's would usually be the best against this, or I suppose a Scorch would be pretty solid. We do have a few cards that are tied for the highest amount right now, but I think once we use Morn's Heart, that will probably change. So it won't be that effective. And they're stuck. Putting those infusions on Thrive cards, which means, at best, they're basically just... They're dealing damage, yes, but they're boosting our cards whenever they play a Scratch a lot. So on net, it's uh, it's basically just all canceling out. Gurnacoras, though, they can destroy those. They already got rid of one. I'd like for this last one to stay, because... You know, we don't really need the board space anymore. And it is just enough to do that. Interesting. Okay, so... Theoretically, we do have room to scratch a lot and still get and drink a larva on the board. So I think we do that. We'll go and drink a larva here, just get one more thrive, and then spam scratch lots in this range row. Obviously, we'll use more tart as well. Make sure we have time to do all this. So let's do that first. You're up to 26, which I think still means even after all these scratch lot boosts that you will remain the highest card on the board. So if their last play was going to be something like a scorch to try to remove multiple of our units, that's going to be pretty tough when we have a Morn's Heart that is a fair bit higher than the other cards. And they've gotten close at the end of their turns. I don't think they've caught us at the end of any of their turns, but we'll have to see here. We do have what is just under a 100-point lead, a 91-point lead, but of course, we have some pretty big point swings that we've seen here, so I am very interested to see 
if they can catch us. Most significantly, their board is full. So I don't think they can play this last card unless it's a special, which is why I keep on referring to Scorch, because the Geralt's I just don't think would work. They also have almost no time to play this card because they keep on using up all their turn timer because it takes so long to play these scratch a lot. So I don't think they're going to be able to make it work. They'll try to spam as many as they can. But I think that's the last they'll have time to use. And that means we'll hold on for the win. All right, so going up against monsters here. And if they'll go first. Okay, so we have scratch a lot. That's obviously great. We have some low power Thrive cards, which is what we want to combine with them in round one. Otherwise, we risk getting those bigger cards like Cave Troll back instead of Sir Scratch Lot when we use Witch's Sabbath in round two or round three. So we kind of like to dump some of those four power or higher cards. And with Spear Tip in hand, that means Spear Tip Asleep is not all that relevant, or we could dump you and just rely on you to make it happen. Butterflies can help us get more of those weaker Thrive cards, and it looks like they may be potentially trying the same thing, because they're leading off with Thrive as well. So we can go Scratch a Lot turn one, or we can go Necker turn one. I think... In either way, I suppose. Let's go Necker as well. Now, the fact that they're going first here, I think, might actually be significant because they're going to get their Scratch Lot down first. No, they're going Larva. Okay, so I think now we'll go their Scratch Lot here. This larva may very well be the card that we're going to want to try to get with Triss Butterflies, but we want to get Scratch Lot down so that when they trigger Thrive, it's also triggering our Thrive as well. So the initial Scratch Lot has immune. The subsequent Scratch Lot that spawns in from plus one does not. And he's on one power, so he is quite vulnerable. We'd like to keep him alive long enough to replay him, because then he'll be much less vulnerable once he gets the boost. But, uh, he could get destroyed, we'll still create another copy, we could use Carapace to make him harder to remove, and then we can scale the Scratch Lots more easily. I think we'll take our chances here, at least at the moment. They don't have any indication of ways to shut him down, but Onero is certainly going to be that. Here comes a Scratch Lot on their side, so basically wanted to race them. To get our scratch lots down first so that when they start triggering their thrive ours would get triggered as well but we also need to out thrive them because if we spam scratch lots then uh that means that they're gonna get the boost as well and we need to make sure that our boosts are more valuable than their boosts we unfortunately cannot fuka otherwise we would risk getting a fuka back rather than getting a scratch lot back so that's why what we need to do here is either drowner and ah, it's not quite enough to remove any of those Thrives, or they boosted a Scratch Lot, so we can't remove that either. So this might be something we wait till next turn to do. I mean, we could still do it, but it's not ideal. I think that means we'll go Triss Butterflies, put back you, in order to get you. And then technically speaking, playing the Scratch Lots here, it's not great at the moment when their Thrive Engines outnumber our Thrive Engines, so this is a little bit of a mixed bag. We are still increasing the power on our Scratch Lots, but as you see, they're getting more boosts from the Thrive Triggers than we are until we get Intricate Larvae of our own and or some Drowners out here. So yeah, that, that's exactly what I plan to do on our next turn here is when they replay a Scratch Lot, we're going to use a Drowner to destroy it. It is pretty much exactly a mirror match here. Different leader ability, yes, but outside of that. Okay, so now we do Drowner, destroy a scratch a lot. And yeah, that gives us more Thrive, which is nice. And we can proceed to continue here once again. I mean, Thrive, we're getting a little more on the board here. But I think they still outnumber us, so that's why, again, this is not perfect. So we need to be a little bit careful here. We need to make sure this uh, this next Thrive is going to be pretty important. And the Scratch Loss, of course, will start to take up 
an increasing amount of space. Okay, so Red Haze, which will destroy one of our Thrive engines. That's not a bad option. It means they may not be getting more Thrive on the board, but they're limiting our Thrive a little bit. Now we're, of course, going to proceed to get three Thrive engines on the board on our next turn. We do have a Lacerate, which should be able to deal a fair bit of damage here with how wide both of our rows are. Question of, do you shut down three scratch lots, Or do you... I think we still do this first. I think we still do that first. Because now, let's just check Thrive Count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Versus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Darn. That's not good. Okay. That is unfortunate. I think we will still proceed to boost here. Trying to boost the little ones because they have the most to gain from replaying. And then this guy, obviously, is our, our biggest scratch lot, so we'd like to replay him as well. The scratch lots that we spawn in notably do not increase their... Uh, their boost value. Like, the new ones are still always going to be boost, too. It's not like we're creating another copy of the higher boost ones. For what it's worth, technically speaking, technically speaking, when they have more Thrive on the board than we do, it is more valuable, m better for us to boost up the lower value scratch lots. I deliberately did not use this one because if we trigger the Thrive here, we're giving them more Thrives than we are giving ourselves, as we were saying before. Vi! Really? I mean, I guess it explains the overwhelming hunger. I'm just... Still kind of came out of nowhere. Okay, so what we want to do here is we'd like to boost without triggering their Thrive, if we can. We want to just receive higher power on our side, and we can do that by replaying this scratch a lot, this scratch a lot, this scratch a lot, and this scratch a lot. Anything that's going to go above 10 is probably a no-go, but you will get to exactly 10. So yeah, everyone but you is safe. At this point, not going to create additional scratch lots because we're going to run out of board space if we do. We're going to do this. And then going to lacerate. And we could lacerate this row, but we're going to get some vies, which I don't really want to do. So there are fewer units in that range row, but I think we'll still opt to go that route. I don't love damaging Rive. So it, of course, makes it easier to trigger that Thrive. But we'll see. We don't really want to play anything else here. Because if we do, that means that we are going to potentially get that card back with a Witch's Sabbath rather than getting a Scratch Lot back with Witch's Sabbath. That is one of the ways that we should be able to outpoint them in subsequent rounds. So they'll spam the Scratch Lots, and they, because they have more Thrive than us, have that advantage of... Being able to use them more aggressively to trigger Thrive, which is something we were deliberately avoiding before. So I think they should definitely be able to pass us here. was pretty close for what it's worth and as of right now we do do already have a scratch lot in our graveyard if we were to play something like beast which is also a four power bronze or four power monsters unit rather that means we have the risk of getting this out with the witch's sabbath in a subsequent round which is why we weren't trying to play him initially although if we have one scratch lot here two three four five six seven eight scratch lots 
still a pretty good chance that we're getting exclusively scratch lots or at least two scratch lots with Witch's Sabbath in a subsequent round, and maybe we're willing to live with a beast in that case. So then, at this point, I think we're still okay with this boost. This boost, basically anything that is currently at 8 power, scratch lot wise, is fine. So it's just enough for us to force them into playing more cards here. And we will now get a little bit of points from these beasts, even after we end our turn. So yeah, next turn is definitely going to be, I think, the time when we pass. And their rows are full, so I am curious to see if they can do anything here. They can. We'll lose a beast. They lost a Vi. And they are going to continue to spam the scratch lots, and I think in doing so, we've established they are going to gain more points than we will, so I think they will still be able to retake the lead here. But we will probably give it to them. Probably let them win this round, in that case. Because at this point, yes, we can play more cards, but we need Spring Equinox in the subsequent, subsequent round to uh, set up the Scratch Lots, otherwise they're just going to destroy themselves. And if we play Old Spirit Tip or Cave Troll, we are guaranteed to get one of these instead of a Scratch -a Lot. Whereas the Beast, there was a chance we were going to get it, but there's a higher probability that we were going to get Scratch Lots instead because they're tied for the same amount of base power. So, I, I mean, like, we could... I mean, even if we discard one of them, it's still gonna still gonna be the card that gets summoned from Witch's Sabbath at Spring Equinox. We could throw it away, and do we play No Nero? No. So we are not guaranteed to see this in a subsequent round anyway. So yeah, I think we have to think we have to try pass or pass here. And it's tough when their row was full; they might not have been able to go further, but we really didn't want to either. Okay, so they did play one more card than us, which means in theory we might see them try pass here. In which case, we did draw into Nero. So we would use that to get a throwaway, namely something that is smaller than four base power or is a neutral. So that does still not interrupt the Witch's Sabbath, which we also draw into, so that's great. And we might otherwise be looking for cards that can synergize more effectively with what we're trying to do here. And I don't think Cave Troll is all that necessary. And Dragon Larva will be really nice in a subsequent round, so that's good. Not sure we need Old Spirit Tip. More Thrive is probably better. They are going to play. It's Haunt. So we saw a little bit, a little bit of Vi. And it does make you wonder if maybe that's what their plan is here. I was kind of hoping that they were going to end the round with Vi on the board and so it would not go back into their deck. But alas, I think both Vi's did. So that's not what we like to see. And we are still handicapped a bit here in that we cannot play anything bigger than four provisions, or rather four base power, unless and until... We use Witch's Sabbath, which I was hoping we would save for round three. But uh, I think that means this is going to have to be... The Dragon Larva is still not enough tempo-wise unless we use a leader ability charge. I think we're going to have to do this, though. Oh, no, it is with this uh, additional one spawning in. So that's, that's actually perfect in that case. It is Vi. It will immediately get consumed by the Vargas, presumably. Tempo-wise, this is going to be kind of tough. But, like, if we Witch of Sabbath now, they, yeah, they're going to get a lot of scratch lots as well. They might get a Foglet, but it's unlikely with all those scratch lots. Kind of the same bet we took with the beast, and they actually have more scratch lots than we do. We will not get neutral cards, so we're not at risk of getting Triss out. But, yikes. Uh, I mean, we can destroy this bar guest, which does prevent some Vi consumption. So that's something, but it's obviously not worth that much to us. Unless and until we have the means to trigger these Thrives, but we 
don't really want to do that because it's going to help them just as much as it helps us if we get out those scratch a lots. Okay. Well, also, we might have wanted to road stack a bit here so we can more quickly and easily get the Witch Apprentice to reach Sabbath. Speaking of which, may need to break out Bloody Mistress here. So that is seven, eight with the one power copy, plus the nine here. Once we trigger the Thrive, is still not quite enough to immediately trigger it. Yikes. I think it has to be this. Obviously not going to trigger the Sabbath yet. But now that should get us into Sabbath range on our next turn. When we play what will likely be Bonero into the... Uh, Bloody Mistress, and obviously at this point we are playing things that are 4 power or eventually higher than that. Because at this point we need to. No real alternative. So we'll do... This. Might have wanted to go melee road just so we have the space. Also, that's still not enough for Sabbath. Unless we do 2... Therapist charges here. I think you're going to lose the statuses when you transform, but we need the power anyway to reach Sabbath, so that's the primary reason why we're doing it. The reason why I was hesitant to play you in that range row is because once you spawn in all of these Gurnacorus fruits, as you see, it takes up a lot of room. It is just enough space, though. They will pass here. So here's the thing. We need to Witch's Sabbath on this turn. Which was our win condition going forward, but they get some scratch lots. We get some scratch lots. We do get beast, which is not really what we were looking for, but technically we could pass here, and we should pass here, because these Gurnacores will get big enough quickly enough, and this beast will get big enough quickly enough that we don't need to play this, so we don't need to worry about spamming the scratch lots further. So we did technically sort of fend off the bleed, but uh, we won round two. We just had to use our key combo in round two. So now we're kind of top decking here. It means we no longer have a need for Spring Equinox. We have Fuka, we have Bruxa, both of which can work. For Thrive, and we have a way to trigger it with the cave troll and Onero into... I mean, Morn's Heart may be sufficient. They're presumably going to be going for the Vi carryover, which will be great in a short round, but Morn's Heart is pretty solid for us. I think we probably dump Ruxa. Uh, no! It's worth nothing. <laughs> uh, the one zero-point card we had. Okay, well... Alas, alas, um, if we really wanted to take the risk, we could Snowdrop with Onero and see if we could replace Spring Equinox with Morn's Art, but that's a pretty big risk. I mean, either way, we're probably going Fuka turn one. Okay, and the Spear is going to destroy one of them, not both of them. Okay. And if we're trying to do Onero into Snowdrop, it needs to happen this turn. Because we need to play Morntaunt on our second to last turn to have time to use this. And actually, nice to see they used some removal in that previous turn. Otherwise, Morntaunt could have fallen victim to that. Just need one of them to survive and actually would have had enough armor to tank the damage anyway. But don't know if they have more where that one came from. So... I think it probably just has to be more in start directly. I think we probably just have to live with this. It is so painful. It is so painful. Let them use whatever removal they have left on this. Yep. We'll take it. 
now it's Onero into Morn's Heart. Has to be melee. Make sure you play it there. And probably worth throwing a carapace on one of them. So we have a lot of units in our graveyard. So that's a good thing. It should be worth a fair bit here. Just need one of them to survive. Is that going to be enough to outpoint a Vi? That's the question. Vi of Forbidden Knowledge is not worth much. And it's not control either. So now we go Cave Troll. And that's going to somewhat protect these Morn Tarts. Now, if they have something like Yurden, that's obviously still going to hurt. But I think we go for it. And how many points is it worth? Should be probably just under 30. Just under 30. So Vi by itself is not enough. It is Onero, though. Into Vi, it's 19 points, but I think we'll still hold on here. We'll take the win. So there's the look at a monster's scratch a lot deck for the new plus one seasonal event. Was he nerfed? I don't know. You decide. If you liked the video, then make sure to hit the like and subscribe button and leave a comment down below to let me know which other cards, archetypes, and factions you'd like us to experiment with next. Thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you next time.